Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out with John Rawling, the voice of BT Sport Boxing. John, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. We're here for the press conference to announce the big April 27th show at Wembley Arena. I wanted to ask you first of all, last time we spoke was ahead of the Royal Albert Hall show. With so many British boxers on the other side of the fence, if you like, going over to America and, and having their next fights over there, is it refreshing for you to be involved in these shows that are taking place at kind of iconic British venues like Wembley Arena, Royal Albert Hall? Well, personally, yeah, because, I mean, I've been doing on the boxing beat now for a long time, talking about three decades, uh, and I loved that show at the Royal Albert Hall the other night. I thought it was tremendous, great atmosphere, and I thought that the fighters loved being there. You know, and performing in front of the in front of that audience, and I'm I'm going to look forward to being back at Wembley as well because I've seen some tremendous shows there, and I think it's you know I mean, I'm not going to start criticising how people choose to project their fighters or where the fights are going to be. That's up to the promoters involved, and fighters take their chances when they're given. So if that involves going over to the states, then so be it. From but from a British fight fans' perspective. I think it's fantastic that these big shows are here in London and so people who love boxing, as everybody watching this interview right now presumably do, they get the chances to see these fellas up close and personal. I think it's important as well because you know we don't want to go on too much about the contrast but if there's a gap in the market for British based shows on at British times as well in terms of not having to stay up until the middle of the night that's got to be a positive thing you know we've got these shows that we've talked about Warrington Galahad obviously there was a press conference for that yesterday coming up in Leeds Frank's talking about bringing Anthony uh, Sergei Kovalev over for Anthony Yard as well so it's all very much a British based thing it's a big kind of opportunity for BT Sport to stamp their mark on boxing in this country I think. Well, I think, uh, I think we have done. I think, BT, I think BT Boxing so far has been a conspicuous success. You know, people can make their own minds up, but from, I've been involved in a lot of different television companies over the years, and I think what they're doing at the moment is terrific. And I think they're putting together some quality shows. You know, obviously some are going to be better than others, and you, you're not go, I'm not going to hold my hand up and say every show's been a world beater, because it's not. But we've put together more good shows than bad shows, and I think for the most part, I think that the fans who've watched it, who've gone along, but those who've watched on television with BT Sports, I think, have been satisfied. And you look at this show, you know, it's, 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 it's similar, the one we're talking about here. There are good fights there, good British title level fights, uh, area fights, which, uh, which sometimes turn out to be some of the best entertainment, as you know, Danny. Well, let's talk about this show. Daniel Dubois obviously taking the next step in his career. Everyone's talking about him fighting Nathan Gorman towards the end of the career. Uh, sorry, the end of the year, not the end of his career. He's got a long way to go. Um, Gorman's obviously fighting in Leicester at the weekend as well. What does this mean in terms of Daniel Dubois' progression, this fight specifically? What, what can he learn from it? Where does it kind of mark him out as being on the world stage? Well, I think it's a comparative study with Nathan Gorman again, isn't it? We're going to be looking at Nathan on Saturday and seeing how he looks. And then we're going to be looking at Daniel and seeing how he looks. And, and it's all about building up to what promises to be a terrific domestic confrontation somewhere down the line. But I thought that Daniel looked really good last time out at the Albert Hall, uh, beating uh, the Romanian, the big Romanian. And, uh, and, and I think he'll be looking to build on that. Richard Larty's ranked number 14, I think it is, internationally with the WBO. He's a great big lump. And he's been winning fights by knockout. He's six foot five, so physically he's the same sort of shape and size as Daniel. And it's another step along the way. You know, he'll be wanting to look good. He'll be wanting to continue showing his punching power. I'm sure he'll want to win spectacularly. But I got the impression at the Albert Hall that the British fight public now is really starting to latch on to Daniel Dubois. And when he put Kojinu away with, the, with that big left hook and a tremendous, tremendous attack, uh, it was it was like rolling back the, the the years a little bit to when Anthony Joshua was coming through and going back before that when Lennox Lewis was coming through and when Frank Bruno was coming through. You know, I mean, there is that little bit of excitement with the heavyweights, and I get the feeling now that the British fight public is starting to really warm to Big Daniel. And looking at the rest of the card, you've obviously got Lorraine Richards at super middleweight for the Commonwealth belt with Tommy Lankford, who's recently moved up from middleweight. Is that a pick Is that a 50-50? It looks it. I think it's a really good fight, that. And, um, you know I, know, I know you'd probably say, well, you would say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, you know, if you said, where's your, where's your money going to be on that? It is a very, very difficult one. Tommy at super middle rather than middle. I think he's probably a bit more comfortable at that weight. 
Richards has done nothing wrong so far, and there's, it's, it's, it's on the line. It's, uh, it, it, it underlines what I just said about sort of domestic fights at Commonwealth, British, even area levels can sometimes produce the most exciting fights. And that, for me, is a, a genuine pick and fight. And I, I honestly, honestly don't know how that's going to go. And finishing off with Zach Chelly against Jimmy Smith, is Chelly one of the biggest under-the-radar prospects in British boxing at the moment? He's a lovely lad. <laughs> he's self-deprecating. He, uh, he, he's not got a, an ego which puts people off. He's doing everything right so far. He's intelligent, he's articulate. His dad's a character as well, and, uh, and he's, he's a good to have him around the, around the promotions as well. I think Zach's got a lot going for him. Uh, it's early in his career, six fights so far. He's done everything right to this point. Let's see where he goes from here. But, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how he, how he copes with Jimmy. Brilliant. Well, we appreciate your time, John, and we look forward, obviously, to hearing your voice and your commentary on the night. Thank you very much.